Hi friends, on today's chemical class, we're going to talk about degreasers, specifically strong commercial degreasers like the purple ones, and one particular way that they clean. Now I know what you're thinking, degreasers don't really technically apply to carpet cleaning, mostly commercial concrete, industrial cleaning, stuff like that, but hey, close enough. But we can't talk about degreasers without first talking about soap. Colloquially, we use the terms soap and detergent interchangeably, but technically, soaps are detergents, but not all detergents are soaps. Soaps are specifically created when a strong alkaline is used to saponify a fat or lipid. So what's that mean? Let's talk about it. The caustic alkaline which creates soap is either sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. These hydroxides are commonly called lye or caustic soda. When the hydroxide reacts with an oil or lipid, saponification occurs. Saponification is the conversion of this fat or oil into soap and alcohol. This occurs through a chemical process in which the lye breaks apart the ester bond of a triglyceride, releasing the fatty acid salts, soap, and glycerol, alcohol. These fatty acid salts would then be a detergent, meaning they have a polar and a nonpolar end, a hydrophobic and a hydrophilic end. Check out the detergent video for more information about how this works. Different fats or oils can provide different soapy characteristics. For example, most bath soaps nowadays are made using fats like coconut oil, which provides for a soft, easily soluble, and lathering soap. Some, like the old-fashioned hard bar soaps, are made using tallow or animal fats, which make a hard, less soluble soap. Soap makers have the luxury of tailoring the oils and the amount of lye used to customize their results. So what does all this saponification talk have to do with degreasers? Well, we have the fats and oils. That's the soil we are trying to move. So what if we backed up the cleaning step, and instead of using a detergent for cleaning, we provided the raw inputs and let the grease or oil soils create their own detergent? Well, the commercial degreaser products we use in the cleaning industry consist of a collaboration of surfactants and caustic soda, usually along with a purple dye. This dye doesn't really do anything, but we have grown accustomed to strong degreasers being purple, so hey, that's what you get. The caustic soda in the degreaser saponifies the grease and oils, creating its own detergents. Of course, we don't have much control over the exact oils we are saponifying, so generally the degreaser can be quite hard to cleanly rinse and can leave a residue as well. Usually this is assisted by using surfactants and wetting agents in the degreaser alongside the caustic soda. This process works excellent on substrates that can handle the very high pH and corrosive nature of the caustic sodas, which is why it's used for concrete cleaning or heavy-duty cleaning of grease on engines, etc., and definitely not recommended for carpet cleaning, where the degreaser would immediately strip any fiber protection on the carpet yarns, and the high pH could cause permanent color damage. However, many commercial guys have found success using a small amount of degreaser to boost detergent pre-sprays on commercial carpets, and although I can't recommend it, I can say from experience that it can be very effective. So that's the short version of what a degreaser is and how it works. Thanks for watching this week and check us out for the rest of our series on cleaning chemical chemistry. See you next time.